I spoke in my editorial about Australia's Wokest Council, Yarra City Council, which, as I said, has passed its climate emergency plan, calling on uh, residents to become vegetarians. But, Daniel, just before I went to air, it's been revealed that the council has been serving roast beef to executives and council members before their monthly meetings, including, get this, the meeting where they voted to enact this climate emergency plan, telling everyone we've got to go vegetarian. They served roast beef right before that meeting. Well, James, just another example. It's one rule for me and another for thee. That's how these inner city elites operate, isn't it? You know, they go off and they're on the gravy train uh, for life and they want to impose all of these rules and social controls on everybody else. Uh, I agree with you, it's probably the wokest council in the nation, but I've got to tell you, it's a pretty tight contest between Melbourne City Council and a, and a couple of others uh, around here. So, um, you know, the other point to make here is I just think, you know, Australians more generally have had a gut full of the division. Uh, you rightly pointed out in your editorial, they spend more time talking about flags and, you know, other social issues than actually dealing with genuine problems on the ground. Uh, roads, rates and, uh, rates and rubbish should be what local councils are focused on, but they just engage in this endless, hypocritical, as you've identified, uh, you know, social policy and cultural division. And I think even the local residents in Yarra, who are more to the left, are just fed up with this. Daniel, can I just say, I mentioned they were serving roast beef and you talked about the gravy train. That was very good. I just want to let you know, <laughs> I noticed that and I inwardly applauded. Hey, uh, more bad news for Joe Biden today with Hollywood heavyweight and major Democratic Party donor George Clooney calling for the president to drop out of the race. In an op-ed for the New York Times, Clooney wrote, I love Joe Biden as a senator, as a vice president and as president. I consider him a friend but one battle he cannot win is the fight against time. We're not going to win in November with this president. Now, by the way, it was only three weeks ago that George Clooney fronted a fundraiser that raised $30 million for Biden's re-election. Now he says Biden's too old. Ocean's 13, to be honest, was more believable. Sophie, Biden is adamant he's staying in the race, but you've now got uh, Chuck Schumer saying uh, he's open to another presidential candidate. You've got Nancy Pelosi refusing to uh, support Biden uh, unequivocally. Um, let me ask you this. Biden is obviously a problem, but is it almost becoming now the uncertainty around who the candidate will be that could be the biggest problem for the Democrats? Well, I think the biggest problem for them is that Joe Biden isn't going anywhere. He's digging his heels in deeper by the day and he's made it abundantly clear that he is not going to go out uh, of this presidential race uh, without some kicking and screaming. So uh, I think that is the problem. He's trying to move him on because he's made it clear that he won't be doing that. But look, George Clooney, has he been asleep at the wheel? I mean, three weeks ago, are you saying, you know, at this uh, fundraiser, and that's been reported, he was fronting this fundraiser, oh, what, well, he's suddenly had a, a moment where he's woken up and gone, oh, Joe Biden's actually not very in good shape, and oh, you know, this isn't good. Well, hello, where has he been for the last few years where Joe Biden has been making an absolute fool of himself? And, James, I do think it's a sad state of affairs. I feel like this is a case of elder abuse. Joe Biden uh, has got people there telling him to go along, you know, push through. Clearly, he's not up to the job. He does need to move on, but he won't be doing that willingly. Absolutely. And as for George Clooney, I mean, his stock in trade is make-believe, right? So it all fits. Hey, uh, as Victoria battles skyrocketing debt, the Allen government is uh, facing major cost blowouts, again, surprise, across more than 100 office refurbishments, school upgrades and transport projects. The Herald Sun reports that Victorian taxpayers have forked out more than $300 million just to top up funding for capital works contracts. And there are some incredible examples, uh, Daniel, one of which $110,000 allocated for window and door restorations on the Treasury reserves has blown out to more than $3 million. What on earth is going on in the state of Victoria? This just keeps happening. James, they can't even clean the windows on time and on budget. Uh, and this is what happens when you have woke ideologues running a state. Um, they can't manage money. They can't manage the economy. How on earth are they going to deliver these multi-billion dollar infrastructure projects? You've got the $200 billion suburban rail loop that no one wants and that no one's going to use while they terminate useful projects like the airport link that will actually have some economic value to the state. 
And this is just a, another example of why Victor Victoria is Australia's economic basket case. It's the worst performing state by a long way. Uh, it's got businesses that are fleeing the state in droves because of the taxes and the debt and the regulation and spending. And it's not just Victorians that will pay, James. Wherever you are in Australia right now, you are going to be paying for the mismanagement of Victoria because when Victoria goes down, every single Australian taxpayer will have to bail out Victoria uh, because they're running out of money and there is absolutely no plan uh, for how to fix this state. Absolutely. All right, so on this next topic, I just want to get a short, quick take from both of you. Uh, Sydney, Sydney Lord Mayor Clover Moore uh, is in hot water over her plans to slash speed limits in and around the Sydney CBD to 40 kilometres an hour. Now, she says reducing speed limits uh, will uh, reduce the number of crashes and their severity, improving safety for people walking and riding. Surprise, surprise, they seem to be the priority these days on our roads. But business leaders, Road Freight New South Wales and even the NRMA have criticised the plan. Uh, Sophie, I'm sure you're a lead foot. What do you think? 40 kilometre an hour speed limits? Should we just do that everywhere? E everyone would be safe. Well, James, they're making the CBDs, uh, particularly here in Melbourne, unlivable. People don't want to drive into them. Uh, it's not car friendly. You're probably better off just walking around because it's quicker to get around on foot than on four wheels. So I think all she's going to do is encourage people to not come into the city. Daniel, what's your take on this? Do you like uh, 40 kilometre hour speed limits? You're, you're a man of safety and caring I for don't pedestrians? Like I don't like it at all because this is not about safety. This is about Clover Moore getting a congestion tax. Uh, she has been talking about a congestion tax since 2007 and this is just salami slicing their way to taxing Australians for the privilege of accessing their own city to compensate for their own uh, mismanagement, their incapacity to plan for this massive surge in migration which is causing the congestion. And exactly as Sophie said, every single step of the way, these councils are making it harder and harder for mainstream Australians to use and enjoy their own cities. Well, I think you've absolutely nailed it. Sophie, Daniel, thanks so much to both of you.